I'm here to talk about feedback. Uh, I am, as Cooper mentioned, I am Patrick Fuentes. I'm one of the organizers, one of the leads from GDG Twin Cities. I live in Minneapolis. I'm one of the mentors for the Midwest. And I'm on Twitter. You could follow me at PFWAY if that's your thing. And I am here to talk about feedback. When I heard that I had the opportunity to talk about feedback, I got super, super excited because it is one of my favorite things. I have basically three goals, three goals today. First, to like give you my perspective on feedback and hopefully get you folks as psyched about it as I am. Second, talk about how to get it. Third, talk about what to do with it when you get it. I'm going to sprinkle some tips and tricks in there and uh, give you some resources at the end. All right, so what is feedback? If I was going to ask everybody in this room to like write down what your definition of feedback was, and we got all the piece of paper together, did analysis on it, we'd find a pretty big spread, I would guess. Um, and the reason for that is not because one person is really, really right and one person is really, really wrong. Feedback is a complicated thing. We all have a general shared understanding. We're all talking about the same thing when we talk about feedback. But our lens, our perspective is different on it. The perspective that I have that I've cultivated over the years for feedback is that feedback is a gift. And if, if you folks in this room, like seriously, if you only get one thing out of this talk, I would encourage you to try to internalize this, this lens for feedback like deep in the core of who you are. It's, it served me really well as a community organizer and, and just in life in general. So I say feedback is a gift. I'm going to try and make that relatable. I'm going to uh, ask all of you to imagine a time in your own past where you went to an event. Maybe it was a, a tech meetup that someone else organized. Maybe it was like a work event. Maybe it was like a family event. And you're like, this event is awesome, especially because I didn't have to organize it. Great. <laughs> but there was like one thing where you were like, you know, that thing's really grinding my gears. Like, it, it, like, it's still a great event, but it's, you know, it's kind of thrown everything off. Like, maybe it was something with the food, or, you know, maybe it was something with parking. Like, it's just bugging you. And you could have said something to the person that organized it, and you did not. And the reason you didn't isn't because you're mean, or because you're, like, trying to, like, hide all that, that secret wisdom that the event organizer could have used to make their event better for you and probably for other people. It's because giving feedback it could be really hard and really uncomfortable. So like in, in your head, if you're anything like me, you're probably like, well, I mean, they're busy. I, you know, I'd have to find them when they're free. And then it's like, well, well, they're free. You could go talk to them now. And like, well, you know, I just, I'd have to think about how to say it. Or like, they probably don't even want to hear it, right? So like, so you didn't say anything, right? People are going above and beyond to give you this gift of feedback. So if we want to get that gift, we have to seek it out and we have to be grateful when we receive it. That's the thing about getting gifts or giving gifts. Like if I go and I'm giving gifts to people that I don't really know that well, and they're like, yeah, I'm not interested in that. Or <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna give them another gift, right? So if you want feedback, seek it out, be grateful for it. Um, but like what, what is, what are people giving us with this gift of feedback? What's in that little gift box? I think that people are giving us their perspective and that is really, really, really valuable for us as community organizers for two reasons. Reason number one is other people's perspectives, they will see things that you will not see. So other people have eyes and ears and lived experiences that we don't have. And if we're getting feedback from them, then that means that we can add those tools to our toolkit. We can see and hear and experience and understand to some extent what they're seeing and hearing and experience. That's great. But some of you folks right now are thinking, OK, I've gotten feedback in the past, and I didn't feel great about it. <laughs> I didn't feel great about their perspective. So that is, that is not valuable. That's not a gift. I would argue, even if in some divine way we could objectively measure that what someone is saying is objectively false, their, their perspective that they're sharing is, is false, it is still really valuable. And that is because if that's their perspective, that's their reality. Like, that is their lived experience. And if we can measure our community members' perspectives, then we can improve their perspectives. And that's pretty good. 
All right. So hopefully you're as excited about getting feedback as I am. Uh, let's talk about how to get it. All right, so the first thing I would say in anything that involves large groups of people is start with knowing your audience. There are a few different audiences, uh, like a few different ways I'd segment audience when thinking about feedback with regards to community organizing. I would argue the most important group of people to gather feedback from are your community members themselves. That's because they are going to help you answer the big question. The question I've heard Google asking GDG organizers from around North America to answer time and time again. I heard them asking for it this morning. And the question is, what works for your community and what doesn't work for your community? I know a lot about my community, the Twin Cities. I don't know literally everything. And a good way to learn more about it, I would think, would be asking people. <laughs> So yeah, start with your community members, right? But that said, like, uh, I'm going to offer a few different examples, uh, definitely not a comprehensive list, of, of people to think about seeking feedback from that you, just, you might not think of right away. Took me years to like, be like, oh, I should ask these people. The first group I'd recommend is sponsors. So for those of you that have been doing this for, for a little while, I'm sure you had a similar experience to me where you had sponsors for a while. And then like, after like a year or two, or maybe more, you were like, we should probably ask them like, how this is working for them. <laughs> and in my experience, when I ask the sponsors what their perspective is, I can improve their perspective, and they give me more sponsorship, and that's good. Um, for those of you that have a co-organizer, or even those of you that don't have a co-organizer in your chapter, you, you might someday. If you have other organizers, try and get their feedback. Be like, hey, how am I doing? It's just like natural human tendency. We all think like, I'm doing everything, and everyone else is doing nothing. I don't know. Heard about it in psych class in college. It's a thing. So <laughs> just ask me, like, hey, how am I doing? Or like, how do you think the group is going? It's a good way to like invigorate your co-organizers, gets them fired up. They'll start sharing more ideas. They'll probably give you some candid feedback that'll be really helpful, make everything better. Next would be employers in your community. So I, I mentioned sponsors already. I'm not talking about people that are already sponsors. Like people that are employers in the tech community, folks that were talking about sponsorship a couple different talks earlier, it's about relationship building. You don't have to like reach out to an employer that is not a sponsor and be like, hey, we need you a sponsor. You can be like, hey, you're an important pillar of the tech community. We're in the tech community too. Here's some stuff we're doing. You have some employees that come here. What do you folks think about that? It'd be a, a great way I found to get more employees from that company to come, some more attendees. It could even lead to like potential sponsors for like space and stuff like that. Um, maybe speakers from that company. So something to think about. Um, I could keep going with different groups all day. Last group I'll mention, just a, a audience segment to get feedback from. I'd recommend Googlers. So folks like uh, Kubra, Krina, Kyle, et cetera. A lot of Googlers here have talked to a lot of different community organizers for years and years. They probably know a thing or two that might make your life a little bit easier. So ask them for feedback. Be like, I don't know. How do you think this is gone? I did this event. It went like this. What do you think? All right, so basically anyone that's making the dream happen. All right, let's get tactical um, and a little bit strategic, I guess. So tips and tricks. I have two tools and two strategies I think are really, really, really helpful for gathering feedback. So the first tool I would recommend, you've heard it name dropped a few times, you'll hear it name dropped a lot more, Google Forms. I swear I am not promoting this tool because this is a Google event. If I had a better tool for gathering feedback, I would be sharing it with you. I have not even found a anywhere close second. Google Forms is awesome. It's awesome for two reasons. One, it's really good at getting people's input into it. And two, it, it does a, some very good things about getting the input out. So concretely speaking, uh, getting input in, show of hands, who here has used Google Forms before, like filled out a Google Form? OK, literally everyone. <laughs> And then so is everyone in your communities, right? And even people in your communities that maybe have not used a Google Form before, they're going to have a very easy time using a Google Form. Because that team usability tests the dickens out of things in all kinds of little smartphone environments. Do not roll your own tool for feedback gathering. Past me might have done that. 
Uh, like, do, like, just use Google Forms. It'll make your life easier. When I say it does a good job of exporting data uh, in some uh, hand-rolled tools that I've used, you're probably not going to design a whole like very carefully thought out like nice data integrity export feature. So you're going to end up with like maybe some HTML rendered like text or whatever. It's probably not going to be formatted nicely either. Google Forms automatically dumps everything, format it all nicely into a spreadsheet, a Google Sheet. You can export it to a CSV. All you data nerds out there right now are like think of the graphics you can make all easy, segment your data and do cool stuff. That's me. Um, so yeah, Google Forms, really, really great. I'm going to mention that's my number one tool. Any time that I'm trying to gather uh, feedback from uh, more than like a handful of people at a time, Google Forms is my go-to. Other tool I'd recommend, one-on-one -on -one conversations. Like, I, I didn't appreciate what an important part of the job it was until after I'd been doing this for a few years. But just talking to people and saying, like, in a, like, casual kind of way, like, how, how are things going? What are, you, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Really, really, really powerful. It's, it's powerful, like, talking to people like that is powerful not just from a feedback perspective, but in building community in general. It lets, them, lets those people know that you care about them, that you want to listen to them, that you consider them a part of your community. So I mentioned two tools, two strategies. Str <laughs> strategy number one is keep your feedback light. And when I say light, I mean, like, light in tone. So imagine if I come up to you and I'm like, gosh, I've been working my butt off for the last six months on this dev fest. I'm exhausted. Um, it's negatively impact my health, my family, <laughs> my, my job. <laughs> I just, and I don't think it went well. And I was wondering if you could tell me how you think the dev fest went. No, no one in like almost no one is going to give you like honest, open, candid feedback. Also, they're probably going to be really uncomfortable and they're gonna want to get away, right? So, <laughs> so like that's not light. Uh, when I think like a light tone for feedback, this is my go-to. This is solid gold. I swear. Um, think like, do I have something in my teeth? Like that is when I like the tone I'm always going for when I solicit feedback is, do I have something in my teeth? Because that tone, that light tone, it says. I have acknowledged it is possible I might have something in my teeth. I don't love that fact, but it would help me out if you let me know about it so I could do something about it. I might not get it right away, but I will eventually. It'll be fine. Like, that's the kind of tone that makes people want to be open and honest with you. Use that tone. So keep it light, keep it continuous. When I say keep it continuous, you could seek feedback one time. You're like, OK, I'm starting a new GDG chapter. I just need to get all the information from the community and every, all my other stakeholders, and then I got it. OK, I'll put it in the information box. We're good. No more feedback. Don't have to worry about it. One time is probably not continuous. Um, <laughs> once a year, better. That's good. Like maybe you have a big dev fest once a year, and at the end of your dev fest, you have like a big survey and everything. That's, you know, that's better. But really, like, you want to get super frequent. Like, say you have meetups once a month or once every other month. Like, drop one, drop a survey, like, every meetup. Make it feel, like, making it continuous makes it feel normal. And that makes people feel more open sharing honest feedback with you. What's more, you're probably going to catch people when they have a good idea. Have you ever like had like an idea for feedback, but then like nobody asks you about it, and then like maybe you're filling out a form like months later, and you don't remember that great idea you had? Ask people all the time. Catch them when they have that good idea. Um, in fact, you could get super, super frequent. I love if you have an event like a dev fest or a meetup that has multiple speakers. Toss out like a little micro survey after each speaker. See how they did. It's good stuff. As with Everything we do as community organizers, we should be thinking about diversity, equity, inclusion. There is a lot to learn about this, especially on gathering feedback. I recommend doing your homework. Steep yourself in this. I want to highlight two things that are really important, really easy to get better at. The first thing is be thoughtful about the language you use. And the second thing is to, within reason, redact information when you're using that information you gather, the feedback you gather. So when I say be thoughtful about the language you use, we've heard a few people speak about this today. The language we use is going to communicate to people 
in a way that is as important as the words we use, whether or not they are welcome, whether or not they are a part of the community, and whether or not we actually want their feedback. And we do want their feedback, no matter who they are. So use language that makes people feel included. I'll share a resource at the end of this, an article on the topic. Again, like, do your homework. It's an interesting thing to learn about. It's a good thing to learn about. It'll, it'll, it'll make your life better, trust me. Uh, the second thing is redact things within reason. So uh, I mentioned that we rolled our own tool. One thing we rolled our own tool for in the Twin Cities at one point was uh, a call for papers. Um, pro tip, use paper call instead. Not the topic right now. But uh, one of the great things about uh, not rolling your own tools is you don't end up in a situation where the, your data is exported in just a little HTML thing that you end up screenshotting. And then when you want to redact personally identifying information, then you have to do it with little black boxes manually on your computer for a few hours when you're super busy. Uh, don't be like past me. <laughs> Think about redacting personally identifiable information before you start gathering feedback. Like this is an example, like it is super, super important, I think, to combat unconscious bias when you're selecting speakers. But it is also, I think, important in feedback. Like the, the shoe example earlier in, uh, in your folks' talk, like that was incredible. If you aren't already super familiar with unconscious bias, OK. Google it. It's a science thing. It's really interesting. You should definitely get familiar with it. So think about that in the work that you're doing on gathering feedback. So I talked earlier about keeping your tone light. I also think it's really, really important to keep the feedback you seek lightweight, like not a big time burden. Story time, uh, years and years ago, uh, <laughs> a, a much younger and, and more naive Patrick uh, may or may not have put together a Google form seeking feedback that was like 40 pages long. But okay, I was look. I I was an academic before. I was I was doing qualitative research. People, this is very important. Um, my response rate was not great. My response rate was actually zero, un <laughs> until I went and found the people one on one and was like basically groveling in person. And then it was still really really low. Don't be like past me. Don't do that. So like, you don't need to see that little ribbon in the middle. You're like, what is that? Looks like a, like a little a, a design. That is 10% of a Google form that I am guilty of making at some point. Do not do that. Uh, people aren't going to answer it. Um, oh, uh, one other thing. Um, you don't have to come up with all the questions for surveys yourself. So maybe your problem is you're going to make a really, really long form, like past me. Or maybe you're having trouble thinking of any questions. Whatever your challenge is, you're not in this alone. Like, you're meeting lots of other great organizers now. You're meeting mentors, you know, Googlers. You're getting connected with uh, Slack and other online resources. You'll meet a bunch of other experienced organizers when you go to the summit. Leverage those folks. At the end, one of the resources I'll share is just a, a, a tiny bit of questions to get you started. Uh, there are a lot of other generous GDG organizers that'll share stuff with you. Take what you want, leave the rest, remix it, make it work for your community. So some of you folks, with regards to the challenge of keeping things short, you might be wondering, how do I do that? I will give you the tips and tricks, right? This is, this is bonus tips and tricks content. So this is useful not just for making forms. This is also the best advice I ever got for photographs. I got it in my uh, college photography class. I was very fortunate. Um, so the trick to nice, short, amazing forms is the same as the, the trick to great photographs. And that is two things. Number one, take more photographs than you think you can take. Just be like, oh, I took a lot of photogra photographs. Take more photographs than that. That's the easy part. The hard part is then get rid of almost every single photograph that you took. <laughs> the photographs that you cannot get rid of, that you can't make yourself get rid of, those are great photographs. Same thing with questions. Go out there, talk to your fellow organizers, talk to your mentors, get all kinds of questions from them, talk to your co-organizers, come up with your own questions, and then you got this big pile of awesome questions. Okay, now. Try to get rid of almost all of them. 
the questions you can't get rid of are going to be great questions. I'm not like super proud of this, but it's kind of the world we live in. Uh, I was so. Any, anyone that has been a GDG organizer for any amount of time, if I tried to do this talk and I did not communicate this point to the newer organizers, they'd be like, how dare you not give them the one true secret? Uh, <laughs> in fact, it's like so painfully reproducible in every community that I'm like, I went and looked online initially. I was like, there's just got to be a quote. I initially just looked for that in quotes. I was like, someone's already said this. I didn't find it, so I'm quoting myself. Classic quoting himself. <laughs> Um, but it's like it's not just from me. I actually like, got this. I was asking uh, one of the Kansas City organizers, Jay, uh, gave me a good story on like uh, feedback. They were asking a survey like once a year and getting nothing, and then they were asking a survey like once a quarter, getting still practically nothing. Then they were doing surveys. And they were like, hey, why don't we seek feedback once a quarter and then sweeten the deal a little bit with a little uh, prize raffle? And they started to see their response rate go up. And they really struck gold when they went to, after every meetup, they raffle some prizes just for people that fill out a survey. And it's been working really well for them. So not just my idea. Um, I wish uh, it didn't work as well as it did, but it super does. Oh, uh, and then like uh, another resource. I totally forgot to throw this on the resources page, but definitely worth checking out if you're not already familiar with it. It's wheelofnames.com. It's totally free. It was made by, I think, uh, well, I know Martin Omander, Googler, made it in the first place, but I don't, I don't know if the current incarnation is someone like. Oh, Martin's the best. Uh, anyways, what's that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The Wheel of Names has been awesome for years and years, but uh, it has also improved over time. Uh, this will make your raffling off fabulous prizes much, much easier. Also, Last tip related to prizes, if you call them fabulous prizes, everyone gets a little more excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, we got feedback. We got tons of it. We're, we're excited that we have it. Life is good. Uh, what exactly are we going to do with all of this feedback? The first thing, this is, a, this is a natural human tendency. Looking at feedback, if you're anything like me, you're going to start to get a, you're going to feel a little defensive. Even if you don't act defensive, you might just feel that way. Um, that's OK. That means you're a human and you care about what you're doing. So good. Uh, <laughs> those are both good things. Uh, if I had to offer my strategy for dealing with those feelings of defensiveness, I would say the number one thing that works for me is maintaining a growth mindset. For those of you that aren't familiar with growth mindset, there's a bunch of literature related to it, really great stuff. Sum it up like this. You're looking at feedback. You're like, oh, this feedback is good. That means I'm good. This feedback is bad. That means I'm bad. I'm good. I'm bad. That is not what feedback is about. Feedback is not about that. You are great. Every single one of you is a volunteer who is stepping up to make your community a better place. You are all great, and you should feel great. The feedback, <laughs> the feedback <laughs> is not about whether you are good or bad. You are already great. The feedback is about making you more great. You, no matter how incredible you are, we can all become more incredible. And feedback, it turns out, is one of the most effective ways to become more incredible. So maintain that growth mindset. Not only will this help you do things constructive, do constructive things with the feedback, it will also make your demeanor more welcoming to feedback. And that means you'll get more feedback, which means it's, it's a good thing. It's a virtuous cycle. All right. This is, this is my favorite part. It's a process flow diagram. I'm an engineer. I love process. <laughs> don't, don't, it's, not, it's not all like super rigid. Don't, you know, like, the, I think of this process flow as like a guideline. There's a lot of nuance to it. Uh, but basically, all feedback, whether it's in Google Forms or whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, uh, like verbally communicated or secondhand, uh, pretty much I put all the feedback I get in life through this kind of process flow. And I want to at least touch on each of the little boxes there. So first thing with regards to reviewing feedback, uh, your mileage may vary. I find it's helpful for me to review feedback with my co-organizers. So let's say I put, together, put this Google form out there, get all the stuff into a spreadsheet. One person is tasked then with 
you know, redacting personally identifiable information, like copying, you know, columns out of that sheet into a separate sheet, and then mail that out to all the other co-organizers to look at and then get together, like, right after you mail it out and talk through, like, what we each found interesting. I just find, you know, uh, um, in, a, in a small group like that, it's helpful to get different perspectives. So sometimes I might be looking at the, like, story time. I'll just tell a personal story. There was one time where we got a bunch of feedback and someone mentioned, like, don't do t-shirts. And I'm like, oh, Team Stacy. I'm like, t-shirts are the worst. Don't do t-shirts. And th we, we had several organizers. Three other organizers just got, like, super sad face. And, like, all, like, and they're like, oh, they're, they're like, yeah, I hear you. And then they, uh, several people confessed. They were like, yeah, you're making a lot of good points. They are really hard. But every single time I'm out in public and I see someone wearing our DevFest t-shirt, it makes my day and it reminds me why I do this. And like, I'm like, hard. It, like, if I had been not in the same room as them when we'd gone over that feedback, I probably would have been a lot more hard charging on that, because I'm going to be a little stubborn. But. Point is, reviewing, I recommend looking at stuff together. It offers a lot of different benefits. That's one example. Actionable, probably the most important box on this process flow diagram for those of you that aren't used to sifting through tons and tons of feedback from the public. The thing is, you're going to get a bunch of feedback. You don't have to act on all that feedback. And by you don't have to, I mean you literally cannot act on some of that feedback. So like, for example, Someone might say, I don't like the weather in Minnesota. <laughs> you should, should stop having meetups in Minnesota in the winter. It's terrible. I don't disagree. <laughs> but there's not a lot I can do about that. That is a quintessential example of not actionable feedback. On the other hand, someone might offer some feedback like, I would like more Flutter content. That's pretty actionable, right? <laughs> and, and, and really simple feedback like that this process flow doesn't have to be all super complicated. That's very obviously low effort, very much in our control, relatively high reward. I just speed that right through to action, right? The stuff that is less actionable, that I move on to follow, follow up and refining. So let's say someone's like, gosh, Minnesota winters really bummed me out. Um, that's not a thing I can change. However, maybe I could pick a venue that has a lot of natural light, that has, uh, if people are parking or taking public transit, it's really easy to get to and really easy to get in without dealing with the weather. There's stuff that I can do. So my point is, like, just try to refine the feedback that you do get if it seems not actionable. And even if you move on to prioritizing things, like look for the stuff that's hot, low effort and high impact, and there's some stuff that you're like, gosh, the community would really like this, but we're just not going to act on it. Try to follow up. Try to close the loop. It builds trust. It builds confidence. Nobody likes to offer feedback and then be like, did they even hear this? Um, and then that, that's why the arrows are kind of double-sided. So like, I could be like, oh, this is not actionable. So I try refining it. And then I go to prioritize it. And when I'm prioritizing it, Quote from Lloyd, the GDG mentor who brought me on in the Twin Cities, make sure it works for the organizer first. Because if you have something that you could do that makes your community better, but it doesn't work for you as an organizer, and then you burn out, then that is bad for the community. I would argue more bad than the food at your meetup or whatever else you might change. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, one last note before I move on to the resources. The feedback I'm talking about here is not feedback like code of conduct violations or any illegal activity, stuff like that. That's not what I've been talking about at all today. Those things you need to handle seriously. If you aren't already comfortable with how to handle that, then talk to a Googler or a GDG mentor or someone. All right, handful of resources real quick. Uh, Radical Candor is probably the most influential book I've ever read in my life. It's all about giving and receiving feedback. I've seen other people mentioning it. I love it. Your mileage may vary. There's an audio book. Two articles on making forms. Uh, one is focused on diversity and inclusion, and the other is just general, tactical, kind of how to make good form, usable forms, form usability. Um, 
fourth resource there, the fourth bullet is a podcast episode, that Coaching for Leaders podcast. I really didn't think I'd like it. I love it. It's fantastic. This episode is just about receiving feedback well. Can't recommend it highly enough. For those of you that are like, look, I don't want to read anything, you can listen to that on the, the flight home or something. And then that last bullet, a nice little neat bit, bit.ly link for you. That's a Google Drive folder where I threw a bunch of copies of Google Forms that I made. Use them. It, I promise you, you're just scraping the surface on what you can get from all the brilliant organizers out there that have made a lot of forms beforehand. I, of course, have to give a huge thank you to all of the GDG organizers and the Googlers that helped me put this talk together. Cannot reiterate how important it is to remember we don't have to do any of this alone. And then lastly, a huge thank you to all of you. I have been doing this for years, and it just is, it's very meaningful for me to see all of you stepping up, being leaders in your community, and volunteering for GDG. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>